You seem oh, yeah. to be talking to just about everybody you possibly can. I mean, how much does this, you know, how much do you try to take advantage of this to its fullest extent? Uh, just like you just said, to its <laughs> fullest extent. Um, this is my fifth year now doing the job fair. Um, so every year I try to take a little something away from it, but now especially being a graduate um, and having my degree, and really, I'm really trying to hit this full force to try to line up some things for after football is done. What are the biggest things you learn from the first four years of going through his program that you can come into tonight and go, this is what I got to do for my last time? Uh, I think the biggest thing is not shying away from confrontation. Um, being confident, being outgoing, and being outspoken, and really taking charge of, of not only yourself and your confidence, but kind of taking charge of the room and the conversation. That and also being prepared. Um, that's the, I think that's also that's the second biggest thing, is knowing enough about the company that you can carry out a conversation and ask insightful questions. Um, I think that's huge, and that's something that, in my experience, has really uh, excited companies that I've interviewed with and how, interned with. How much is that like preached about and talked to you guys when you guys are in that team room for Real Life Wednesdays and you have some speakers that come in from those industries? How much do they harp on that kind of stuff? All the time. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure you guys know we've had some right. some CEOs of the biggest companies yeah. in the world, Amgen, American Express, Dan Gilbert from the Cavs, mm -hmm. Phil Knight from Nike, uh, even guys like Kirk Herbstreit come in and, and talk about being yeah. prepared, having confidence, um, and just asking insightful questions. Even if you already know the answer, it shows that you're interested, it shows that you're engaged, um, and it really, really impresses people, and that's something that not a lot of people in our, uh, in our generation have that confidence and that yeah. ability to carry on a conversation with and have those, those insights. Is there a specific internship you've done in your time here that really stands out in your mind? Uh, yeah, so for me there's two. One, uh, at Goldman Sachs, um, I just got my degree in finance, love uh, investing, love the wealth management and asset management business, um, and I've been nurturing that relationship for the past uh, over three years now. That and then just this past, just yesterday actually I got back from uh, WWE Performance Center down in Orlando. Uh, but that was incredible. That was a childhood dream come true. Um, and I was just a blast. I was what, so much fun. What did you guys like actually do down there? Like was there a department that you guys like over like shadowed or like what just what was that experience like? Yeah so we were uh, we were at the WWE Performance Center in yeah. Orlando, working primarily, uh, or shadowing primarily with their NXT uh, okay. brand. Mm -hmm. And so we learned about the, not only the recruitment of their superstars, uh, but also the devel their development um, in the ring and outside of the ring. Yeah. We learned about their character development, um, their training, uh, and then kind of what goes on in kind of putting together the whole uh, WWE live show. Uh, we spent some time with uh, Triple H and Shawn Michaels, work with those guys um, to kind of learn about some of the back office stuff and more about kind of putting this whole production and this live show together um, and what goes into that. And uh, we got to hang out with a lot of the, uh, the superstars from NXT and also from what they yeah. call the main roster, the Raw and SmackDown, um, those bigger shows, um, some of the more experienced guys. And kind of me as a as kind of a childhood fan, I kind of talked to him more about kind of the secrets of WWE, things that people might not, people that are watching it might not notice or they might not know about what really goes on in the ring, um, behind the scenes. Um, and so that was, it was just really cool. It was a really good experience all together. We gonna see you in the ring someday? <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe, you know, that would be another kind of childhood dream. Um, kind of feeling out some other routes, but I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's Ohio State, and crazier things have happened at, uh, coming out of Ohio State. What, what program are you in now? You, be, you mentioned that you finished your finance degree. What, mm -hmm. Are you in a master's program now? I mean, how is, what is that? So I applied to the MBA program here okay. at Ohio State. Um, when I met with the advisors, the graduate advisors, they said they hadn't taken someone out of undergrad okay. uh, in over 30 years. So that was kind of uh, something that I, they basically kind of told me. They like people coming back with, the, with kind of job experience and real right. experience. Um, so I declared a, a second degree, so now I'm getting a, my second degree in consumer and family financial services. Awesome. And that should be done either this, uh, either this winter or potentially next spring. Awesome. Awesome. Who, who would be the guy on this team who would be most likely to be in the WWE? Chase Young. No, Rashad Berry. Why? Because I'll tell you why. Both, first of all, incredible athletes, massive human beings. But Rashad's got, he's got the personality and he's got that kind of performer attitude and that mindset of kind of putting on a show. Um, I think, I mean, seeing the guys down there, Rashad would have fit right in. Yeah, it'd be a great fit.